Hi friends, this is Sarah. Welcome back to Crafting and Relaxing. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining us. Today's video is going to be a little different. It's going to be quite a mess. I got a request to talk about inks and the different types of inks and um, not too specific, but I kind of took it as, you know, which inks do I like or which brands would I recommend? And when I started thinking about it, there's a lot of different decisions on that. So first I wanna show you one thing so you know where I am and, and what I'm talking about when I say dye versus uh, pigment. I have just a bunch of inks piled, some ancient, some new, all sorts of things. First thing is I'm gonna start with a dye-based ink. This one is a Gina K in turquoise C. I don't have a blue blue. These aren't even my inks. I haven't chosen this brand. I'm not uh, trying to bias you in any way. I'm just trying to show you a dye-based ink. I'm gonna take my hand after I stamp each one of these and I'm gonna rub all over it and then I'll lift them up and show you. Okay, this next one, you can see why I purchased this. It's a VersaFine Claire and this is a pigment ink. And pigment inks work for embossing and they give you a brighter, gooier color. Okay, you see how much ink is on that stamp? And then I'm gonna stamp it, and then I'm gonna smear across it. It didn't smear too bad. Okay, so same thing with Distress Oxide Blueprint Sketch. So you have a pigment, you have, or you have a dye, you have a pigment, and then you have what we would probably call a hybrid. The Distress Oxides and the Hero Reactives. I think they call them both hybrids. I need to switch my baby wipes, I'm getting a lot of lint. Okay, see how amazing that is? It looks like paint. I'm gonna put that down and then I'm gonna make a big mess, which is what's great about Distress Oxides if you wanna get messy. I think the VersaFine Claire dries really fast. I don't think that was necessarily a true image of what a pigment ink does. I don't have any new pigment inks and I tried one with like a light pink and it didn't work because of the Oh, here's one. This is a, I think this one's still pretty juicy. The pink didn't show very well on camera. So this is a different pigment ink because that VersaFine Claire, and that's part of it, what they're marketing for. It dries really nice and amazing, but that's not typical of a pigment ink. So I'm gonna put this one right here. So keep that in mind if you want to buy, if you love pigment inks, maybe VersaFine Claire is the way for you to go so it's not messy. So here you can see, this is a dye-based ink, okay? Premium dye ink. Don't worry so much about the brand at this point. We're just talking about um, product results. And then this one was the VersaFine Claire, and I stamped over next to it. So it did smear a little, but not much. This is traditionally what happens with a pigment ink if you stamp and then brush against it. So you're making a beautiful project, and the next thing you know, you put your hand in it. Any of these uh, color box pigments, anything that's a pigment, to get beautiful, amazing color, you sacrifice drying time. And then we have our Distress Oxides. You can see the smearing around the edge. The fact that they take a little bit to dry is what gives us the f flexibility with them. So you have dye. I'll write it on here. And these probably aren't necessarily in the right order, right, of dry time that you saw. Pigment. I'll just call Distress Oxides their own. Well, they're kind of called hybrids. Because now that time is going by, there are other people who are coming out with different water reactive hybrid kind of inks. And then this one, I'm going to call this, it's VersaFine Claire. We'll just name it what it is. It's a pigment, but it has a nice drying time. But when I purchased it, I didn't realize, I love the color, but I make a mess when I use it, okay? Anything that I say in this video, remember, I'm not a paid expert, I'm just somebody who has opinions. If you don't like them or you disagree, that is totally fine. Okay, so you can see those. So this is sort of what I came up with. I used a very uh, ugly piece of cardstock because I have a lot of these and I needed something big. So this is what I worked through. Do you need ink pads in a variety of colors? I'm gonna back you out so you can see this better. There you go. 
Do you need it in a variety of colors? Okay, we talked about dye, pigments, and hybrids. The thing is, what do you want to do on a day-to-day -day basis in your crafting, creating, art studio, whatever you're doing, what do you want to do? If you want to do scrapbooks and mini albums, your ink needs are minimal. You could get markers or pens for journaling and you'd be great. You could get some zigs or you could get some, um, these are all zigs actually, they're just different kinds. Any kind of different markers, there you go, there you go. A any kind of different markers for journaling or accents. And you can take any of these markers, and a water-based marker, remember, and color on a stamp. So if you wanted to add little flowers to your scrapbook pages, you could do that and you wouldn't even need to own an ink pad. Let's skip the cards for now. Mixed media, canvas, art journal, rocks, walls. I would say for you, you probably don't need colored ink pads either. You could get a black pad. Lots of people use archival. I don't have one. I'm wondering if amalgam will do the same thing. We'll talk about that more. Distress oxides or hybrids are great for mixed media and art journaling because when you add the water, water or other things, they blend. You can make a giant beautiful mess on an art journal page. You might like spray inks or acrylic paint better. And I put an asterisk next to acrylic paint because if you have acrylic paint, it could be anything. It could be Maybe you're a mixed media person, so you have like Dina Wakely ones or Diane Reevely. You have the nicer, fancy. Maybe you have uh, nice, thick acrylics. Uh, this is like the 50 cent bottle. You can use these on any of your rubber stamps too. I will tell you right now, you need to stop what you're doing and wash them afterwards. And you'll probably be better off if you dig out your cheaper paints because they're thinner but you can use any of them. That's an idea, you don't have to, just because you wanna stamp a project in color doesn't mean you have to get an ink pad. And then there's category of change my mind every week. Uh, if you're like me, it's pretty hard to figure out what to buy because my project ideas change every day based on something I think about when I'm driving or something I see on Instagram or the seasons. I mean, it could be anything, right? Something you see in the backyard. That brings us to make lots of cards. If you want to make lots of cards, that's still a pretty big category. So do you like ink blending? And there's no judgment on any of these, right? I'll tell you my opinions and you guys can decide. In general, I don't. I have tons of these, not tons. I have the old brushes from like 20 years ago. I have a couple of these. I actually like these better, the little fingertip things get these for like a dollar or less but in general I don't want to sit around and make a beautiful faded sunset and spend an hour making my background I would rather slap markers and water down on here and throw some paper on it and get a fun background and iron it out later but that's my preference if you want to do a lot of inking and blending almost all of the ink pads work it's just a matter of if you like them soft or if you like them bright so if you want really bright, bold, you probably want an oxide. You want something that's going to give you really heavy, like that pigment color. If you like some of those cards you see online with amazing detailed stamps from Gina K and backgrounds that look like you're sitting on a beach in Hawaii, then you might want to go with a dye based. You can do the same. You can do a lighter technique with the Distress Oxides. You just have to be careful keeping your hands light. Those, you could go either way. Uh, do you like heat embossing? Okay, and I'm not talking about like, do you moderately like it, but are you willing to drag the stuff out on a very regular basis? If your answer is yes, then I don't think you should operate without a Versamark uh, ink pad. This is the basic one. I have also, it comes in others, like this one gives a little sparkle. So this ink pad, if you're not familiar with it, this is one of my oldies but goodies, must have. I bought a new one this year and then I dropped it on the floor. Okay, two dogs, yeah, that thing wasn't coming back from that. It, I tried, but it had a lot of stuff in it. Don't worry that it has black ink in it. Versamark is very sticky. So if you have an old stamp that's a little bit dirty, probably like this one, it will take some of the ink off onto the pad. The world doesn't end. Okay, this is thick. You don't wanna rub your hand over it right after you stamp it. 
but you can use it for embossing. And it's clear, you take any embossing powder you wanna put on it. You could put clear, but I don't usually use clear with Versamark. I usually use uh, gold, white, bronze, colored, whatever. The other thing it does, you can see here, these will dry, and there will just be a nice watermark. This is great for backgrounds. It's great for fall leaves. If you don't want to buy red and pink and you need to make valentines, but you have pink paper and a Versamark pad, you can make valentines because it will do a tone-on-tone -tone pattern. And these will dry lovely. They'll just take a little while, so you want to set these aside. I do not operate without a Versamark pad. When I dropped it in the dirt, I just went and bought another one. And I don't emboss a lot either, but I still make sure that I have one on hand. The other thing is pigment inks. To some extent, you can do it with oxides if you're quick. You can emboss with them. That is the advantage, and that is why people buy inks that take a while to dry, because you can take this scarlet pad and stamp out a holiday image and put clear embossing powder on it, and it will be stunning. But you can't do that with a dye base pad because the powder doesn't stick. So for heat embossing, you need pigment or a Versamark pad, or there are pads that different brands make, and they're called something like embossing fixative or embossing whatever. I haven't tried any of those. Versamark has been around so long that I've never tried any of the newer products because I've, this is probably like my fourth or fifth one, right? In like 20 years, I just stuck with that. Uh, maybe you haven't tried heat embossing, so you don't know yet. That's okay. You're still on the fence. If you don't really like it or you're too lazy to get the stuff out, then I wouldn't worry about pigment inks and that kind of thing. That sort of brings you to this dye-based box, which we're going to talk about a whole bunch. Do you like to color images with markers or pencils? If, if your answer is yes and you like to sit around, you like to stamp some stuff out. Let me show you an example. I was experimenting with Copics. You like to stamp out images and then you want to sit around and color them or you want to take them on vacation. Then you are a different type of stamper. You don't necessarily need solid stamps. And let me show you so you know exactly what I'm talking about here. This would be a nice stamp to color in. This stamp, right, that we just stamped, if you're somebody who likes to color with Copics or uh, pencils or whatever, this is not a great stamp for you because it puts the image on there. Uh, this one doesn't leave you a lot, it has really dark lines. And then also, like all to new layering stamps, they're not really for people that want to color in so much. Maybe as somebody who likes to color in, you would only use the very edge. So you would modify the stamps you purchase if you really like to color, and you don't need a bunch of ink pads. If you like to color stuff in, then get yourself an amalgam ink pad and, a, and pencils and markers, and don't worry about all this other stuff. This is a lot of chaos. Let's talk about the amalgam ink now. You might have seen some videos or something about this. This is the latest and greatest amazing black ink phenomenon. Maybe someone will beat this next month, but for today, I, my friend told me I had to try this, I had to try this, and I'm not a Copic colorer typically, so I wasn't too concerned, and I don't like coloring that much in general. I've been using this all week, and it is wonderful. It dries fast, it's dark, I don't smear it, I don't have problems. I got a memento pad earlier this year because everybody said, oh, this is the one. This one, you can use alcohol markers, you can use water-based products, whatever you want, and it stays. The thing I like to do is, before I buy ink pads, I wanna research them because the prices are all very similar. And if you get this one, you don't need four others. I don't know for sure if this one covers uh, most of the mixed media people and art journalers, they have the archival pad. I haven't tested to see or seen on any videos where anybody says if the amalgam ink is just as good, so literally you only need the one now. But I'm very happy with this. If you're in the market for a new black pad and you can find one online, then get one of these. Otherwise, don't throw out your black ink over it. Then the other thing we come to is, do you like layered stamps instead of coloring images? If you like layered stamps 
like this Alta New set right here. They're doing these pictures with them now where you take one, two, three, four stamps and it comes out like this or this gorgeous yellow flower where you do three and it comes out like that. For these, you really want dye-based inks. If you didn't use dye-based, you'd have to let the layers dry or you'd be smearing them. The other thing that dye-based inks are really good for is those wreath builder stamps that you might be seeing on Instagram. Anything where you're going to, where's the page? I was experimenting with these. If you like stuff like this, don't, these stamps were brand new, so don't judge the ink by it. But I took these Gina K's and I laid them out and experimented with the different colors and then tested the stamp set out. So if you like a heavily stamped card and you don't want a color, you don't want a watercolor, you don't want to use a brush, dye inks and nice stamp sets are the way to go, right? You're layering, you're wreath building. So we'll talk about those very specifically. Then the other thing that I have down here that's a component is, do you love printed papers and matching sticker embellishment packs? If you can't resist those for card making, that kind of changes the situation here too. If no, then you're right back where you started and you want to stamp a whole bunch. If yes, you'd be perfectly fine with the amalgam stamp pad and or pencils and markers because your printed papers and embellishments that come with them will take up so much room. Here's some cards from something I just made. Will take up so much room on your page that you don't do a lot of stamping. When I get a super fun, I have so many of them piled up. When I get a bunch of a new six by six pad and the sticker sheet that goes with it, I find that I don't stamp very much because many of these, let's see, come with, oh, like this one, the pet one that we looked at in a different video, they come with sentiments in them. So by the time you use up all the sentiments that you like and all the variety of papers, you get to a point where you may stamp some happy birthdays, but you just don't use stamps as much. I find that I buy a ton of those, and so I don't use the stamps as much. So this is my um, super fancy thing to show you. The one thing that I wanted to circle back on and make sure is, if you have a bunch of ink pads, you were a busy stamper, and now you're into mixed media and you're not using them, while you don't necessarily need to run out and buy them from mixed media, if you have them, Take these ink pads, oh these are the old Stampin' Up! ones. Put them down on the pad, add some water, make a mess, use them. If they're sitting around, don't be afraid to use them for backgrounds, all kinds of stuff. Just because you bought it for a certain activity doesn't mean you can't transfer it over. That's why you see me use embroidery floss and all kinds of things in my cart. Because I'm not cross stitching, so I might as well use it for something. Okay, so we went through this one. Then this is the how would I pick my inks page. At the top it says, you know you want a set of inks, probably dye-based for layering or other busy stamping. That's what I'm calling this, or like wreath builder. Stuff that you need to be able to turn the image in your stamp positioner or by hand, and you don't want it to smear all over your hands. If you're doing a bunch of stamping and you're using pigments, you just end up, my hand right here gets coated. The first thing on how I pick my stamp set is I would think about the colors available in that brand. This has to do with your style. If it's a brand that targets vintage and everything's a little bit off and you're a, an 80s girl and you want super bright colors and they don't do it, then that's not the brand for you. It doesn't matter if I say it's the best brand ever, it doesn't work for you. For me, I need a brand with a lot of blues and I want good blues, right? I want bright cobalt like this, uh, this one's actually a little purple. I didn't expect that. That's how I want to pick my brand. I had a friend that went through every red in the world. She was super picky about her Christmas red, and if it was at all orangey, it wouldn't work. Typically, when you get into a big brand like Stampin' Up! or Gina K, Alta New, they have five or seven different pinks and reds so you can get it but in a smaller brand you might not have that or if it's a brand that's catering to a specific style the thing I love and this again is personal style I want to buy ink pads in a brand that has matching cardstock Simon says stamp does that I think I know Gina K does uh, I think Altenew I haven't just just to be clear stampin up 
I haven't bought anything from Stampin' Up! in years. I don't even know anyone who sells it anymore. I just reference it because that's how I started back in the day, okay? So, I'm not saying their products are good these days. I don't know. What I do know is this is the old package, and I do not like the package on their new ink pads. That's press preference. The second one is ease of purchase. If you want to add slowly, it needs to be available near you or something that you don't have to pay shipping on. Maybe once a month you're going to buy three colors, or maybe you're going to buy them as the seasons go. So right now you would buy your browns and your oranges, and then you would order your reds and your greens and your blues, and then in the spring you would get all the pastels. If you're not going to buy them all at once, you really need to think about how you're going to get them and how much it's going to cost you. Okay, That's why I don't have uh, a lot of new ink pads. I don't have a store near me that has a giant shelf of dye-based inks in all the colors I want. Most of them you have to order online or you have to be close to a couple of amazing stores I can think of that aren't near me. Like if I was near Impress in Tukwila, Washington, I would probably have newer inks. The packaging choice. This is another thing. Do you want small ones or do you want full size? Preference. Preference and style. I'll show you a couple things and deciding factors. For me, in blue, I probably am always going to buy the full size. In pinks, I usually buy the little ones. I want enough to make a friend a beautiful pink birthday card if she loves pink, but not so much that I'm spending $25 on pink ink. I don't like pink, which is why this is my scratch paper. I think you saw me do it, but just to be sure, the small ink pads work just let's use a color you can see on film here's a nice purple the small ink pads work just as well to ink a stamp just takes a little longer whereas this might have been a tap tap and so you can certainly um, get the job done turns out just as nice that's a really old stamp that hasn't been used in forever so don't judge the ink by it right you don't have to have a full size one. Let's see if we need to throw this. Oh, this I have a reinker for. It's it's the same. Your recipient, your card recipient will not know the difference. If you're a snowbird or somebody who lives in a tiny house or somebody who travels a lot for work, you probably want to get the small ones. I think if I was buying a set right now of dye based inks, I would probably get the small ones because it's less of an investment. It's more portable. You can get those cute little boxes and put a whole bunch of them in. I think Tim Holtz has them. I'm sure other people have them. The size, that's that's a point. And then are the lids easy to work with? Do they stay on? Okay. Is it a lid that pops off every time? These uh, cat's eyes, they're kind of a hot mess. I don't think they make those anymore. The Gina K ones, if these were mine, they're not mine. I would have sliced the sticker on each side because... These are a sticky mess, and I do not like that at all. I see people do, I'll show you, I'll find one and show you. I don't like the having the lid attached. I feel like it's just another thing to balance. But see, they leave it like that, so they take this one off and throw it, and then that way the lid stays. And when you stamp, you stamp it like that. Yeah. So it's preference. Find one that you like that you can hang on to. If you have uh, motor skill problems or something, you probably want to go with a bigger one. If space is your number one priority or budget, go with the smaller ones. It's just preference. Same exact ink. Except in Distress Oxides. They don't make them small, and I haven't heard them change their answer that they will. Last I heard, Tim Holtz said they were not going to. I kind of covered this already. Grouped or individual, maybe they have a storage option. Maybe you get such an amazing deal that you decide to try a certain brand because you find them on Amazon in a package. The other thing I like to think about is where are they made? Because I'm thinking about the ingredients. I'm also thinking about my footprint on the planet. If there are inks that are made in the U.S. or they're made within a state near me, I feel better about the fact that I bought a bunch of stuff that I didn't really need and had it shipped to my house than if I have it shipped from China. Uh, Hero Arts made in the US. Gina K, the colored inks didn't say. I didn't see it on them or on her website, but the amalgam ink that is made by Gina K says made in the US. Distress inks and oxides made in the US. So that might be something you wanna check out. 
What I would absolutely recommend if you can is use inks before you buy them. Test them out. Get your hands on them. Go to a make and take, uh, an expo, a class, something, or ask at a small store near you. Even if they don't sell them, people who own a store or work in a store have typically tried different brands. You can also, when you start to narrow it down to different brands, watch or research online. One thing that I found a little disappointing and interesting, and the same thing happens as I purchase Distress Oxides, because I thought Blueprint Sketch would be the best color ever, but I didn't try it anywhere. And it was a little purple. Now, in its defense, look at the package. It does look a little purple. I just didn't realize it. If you try them in person, you would know that Lemon Drop from Gina K is a little more green than I wanted. When I was trying to figure out a sunshine setup, that wasn't so good. And when I stamped, thanks so much, let me find that package for you. I was not happy. Peach Bellini, that'd be great for a fall card. That kind of stuff you learn if you've practiced with them and you've tested them. But if you're looking online and you're buying your inks, you might end up with a lot of product that you're less than thrilled with. That's a great color. And I guess it is called Peach Bellini. It makes sense, but it didn't, it wasn't what I expected. I expected more of a fun pastel. So if you can, try them out. I also have a theory, I don't manufacture things, I don't know if this is true, that many of these inks are made by the same companies. When you use some of these small, uh, not the Distress Oxides, right? The dye-based inks, I think you'll see a lot of similarities in them, and I don't think the world changes based on which one you buy. I think your cards will still come out beautiful. The price, generally, in inks, isn't a factor for me. I mean, it may convince me to buy the small one instead of the large one, but I'm not gonna buy one brand of ink over another brand because of 50 cents a pad, right? I wanna get the color I want and the outcome exactly how I want. The other thing that I wanna show you and go back on and talk about that's funny, I've been trying, I made this matrix because I was trying to figure out how to explain it to you guys. I've been trying to figure out which brand of dye inks to get so I can clean out my drawer and throw out my Stampin' Up! inks because most of them I don't have the reinkers for. I won't use them for cards at this point because the images aren't crisp enough. They're too dried out. I probably should have thrown them out years ago. So I've been trying to figure it out and that's why I thought making this video was a funny request because I don't even have it figured out. When I did my matrix and I thought about all this, I probably don't need a new set of dye-based inks because, and I didn't know that until I did this whole matrix. If you had stopped by this morning and asked me, I would have said, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I have a bunch of scrapbook projects piled up that I want to work on, okay? I'm really getting into mixed media. I have a ridiculous amount of, I'll show you. I have tubs like this, okay, of gold and dilutions paints, and I'm in love with Dina Wakeley's Penny and Lapis and Heidi Swap's sprays and, oh, there's some growling, don't worry, it's just cat-dog situation, and the dilutions inks, right, and playing with these. There's only so much time in my day. When I was playing with this beautiful, don't get me wrong, if you love these, it's not a judgment call. When I was playing with this beautiful Alta New stamp set, in the old days, <laughs> in the old days, the stamp layering flower sets usually only had two, maybe three. I, I realized that because I don't want to put in the effort with these fancy layering stamps, and this one. I love printed papers, okay? I also am having a great time with mixed media making backgrounds. If you use printed papers, I wish I could find, if you guys saw my room, you would die. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy you can only see this messy square right here. And this stuff I put here specifically for you. I hope it doesn't stress you out that it's so messy. Um, I like using colored pencils or the markers I find because I can make something, let me give you an example. This cup, this cat in this blue cup with this uh, brown right here, 
I made this so that it will go with a printed paper. So I'm gonna make a card with it and it will match. That's a little harder to do with the inks unless you're making sure that you're in a brand with matching cardstock. But still, you can't always get matching embellishments. So if you have a set of colored pencils and you wanna make cards with printed papers, then you pick the colors that go with the card. Based on what I saw here today and when I really thought about it, because I love printed papers and I have so many of them filed up and I'm doing so much mixed media, I probably don't need a new set of dye-based inks anytime soon, even after I return these to my friend. So that was kind of interesting for me to think about. But I do think that uh, if you can get your hands on a Gina K amalgam pad, do it. If you need a black pad and you can't get your hands on this one, just wait, okay? Don't, don't buy anything else, I'm telling you. That's how I feel about Versamark and embossing too. But maybe there's something out there I haven't tried. This was a really long video with a lot of different information and I hope that you got something out of it as far as figuring out how to navigate the variety of products that are marketed to you every single day. There are so many products, and especially if you're new to stamping or paper crafting, there are so many products that if you buy the new thing that comes out all the time, it just sits in your closet and rots. That's why I like to have people come to my house, use my stuff, I like to try other people's, because we can actually use the products that we buy more, not just let them sit in the closet and waste. But, I mean, look at this ink. There's so many, and this is, Compared to what's on the market, this is a drop in the bucket. If you're confused about what inks to buy, really think about what do you wanna do? Don't buy something just because somebody in a video said it's the most amazing thing. And the reason that ink is so important is because of the matching cardstock, and you can easily be into ink pads for 100 or $200 in the blink of an eye. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. And I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Bye-bye.